Hello and welcome back to the Freelanceverse. Thanks for coming back to the channel. I have a little secret to share with you guys. In the last couple of months, I attempted to learn as many languages as possible. Y ahora estoy feliz de anunciar que hablo español con fluidez. W ostatnich kilku tygodniach również poświęciłem czas na naukę języka polskiego i conquisté un diploma en lingua portuguesa. Well, no, I didn't, of course. This was the astonishing and frankly scary work of Heijen AI. Heijen AI is a video editor, a video AI generator, let's call it. Uh, it allows you to have avatars uh, talking about, you know, anything you want your business to say. You can get your message across in that in multiple language, but it also allows you to appear to speak multiple languages in a video. You simply upload a file that, like I did to the platform, you choose the language and the neural network behind HNI AI morphs your face, your mouth in accordance with what you're saying. Uh, it's pretty insane to be honest. I wanted to try this out because I've seen it in another YouTube video and I wanted to, I think it's relevant for all of us that we know that this stuff exists, right? So instead of speaking English to you guys every week in my videos, I can now easily speak in my native language in German. In standard German I mean because Swiss German is not yet supported. Currently I speak German and it appears as English to you. Makes my life much easier, right? Not sure, let's explore that a bit further. Localizing media has been a thing for a long, long, long time, right? Usually in a country, you would have a general practice of dubbing versus subbing. Uh, for example, in Germany, I know that most of the things get dubbed, right? You, you, it's, it's hard to find a, a, a movie in its original score without uh, dubbing. Uh, whereas in the Netherlands or Belgium, almost nothing gets dubbed. You can easily find voice, uh, like original voice movies with subtitles, usually in French and in, in uh, Dutch, because it's a multilingual country. So uh, when, I, when I go to the cinemas, it's almost, almost always English with uh, French and Dutch subtitles. One thing that always bothered me with dubbed things is that the mouth the, of the actor was completely mismatching the, the actual thing that was said, right? And especially with the V2 uh, sentence structure, like in German, where the verb is mostly at the end, right? Often the, the actor would stop speaking, but you still have to like push a little verb at the end and it's just, it doesn't make any sense. And especially someone who works in languages gets very irritated by that and it can really ruin the whole movie for me. So I, I don't like dubbing at all. But now with this new technology, who knows? If Gen AI finds its way into the movie industry, into the film production, and I mean, at the moment, of course, it's obvious that it's AI, right? But we are still at the beginning. So this will all become much, much better in the future. And if the actor's mouth is actually matching to what they're saying, I'm, I'm curious if dubbing actually becomes, a th uh, has a second win, it becomes more, more done again. Uh, although a second wind in what way, because obviously all the voiceover actors wouldn't be needed anymore because it would all be AI generated. So it really isn't like the whole industry catching a second wind, but only a couple of tech companies in a way. One thing that I immediately wonder with things like this is what happens to copyright? Right? Uh, my channel is, is very small. As you can see, we are currently around 27, 28,000 subscribers. And still like I have to fight off uh, copyright infringements every month, multiple ones. YouTube notifies me several times a month that someone is just wholesale upload, uploading my videos and trying to make money with it. Now, what happens if, if they use my video and AI generate it into Japanese, Arabic, Portuguese, Mandarin, right? That, that is still my original thought, but I've never said these words. So is it my words? Do I have, uh, can I claim these videos, right? Is it my content? I'm really curious what will happen with these regulations. There's a reason that uh, many tech, gi tech giants are, are, are asking for more regulations in AI, right? Because they know what, what potential negative uh, implications it could have. And I'm very happy to see that especially EU lawmakers are regularly discussing and promoting new laws in regards to AI, for example. Uh, the latest one I've seen was about uh, biometric surveillance, for example. Uh, plus there is a proposal about regulating AI in, in the terms of harmonizing it within the EU, uh, which also looks very promising. So I'm happy that it's on the table at least, um, because the potential harm uh, that these creations can make is, is, is endless, right? Think about uh, election manipulation. You can literally have an opposing 
uh, a person from the opposing party say something that completely mi is misaligned with his or her ideals. And you can publish it on Facebook, on social media, and you, we all know how gullible people are on Facebook, right? Whatever is there is the truth, it counts. So it, it's scary to think about that because we already know that you can't trust anything on, on, on the internet, but now it gets even more intense. You could literally use celebrities to promote your brand, right? I've seen on YouTube advertisements before my videos sometimes of, of people like Elon Musk, Gandhi, or even Michael Schumacher being AI generated onto a brand to promote their services. I'm sure they didn't check if they're allowed to do that, right? They're just using a personality's figure to promote their brand, but they never said that. So what does that mean? Like, who owns this content? Is this person really uh, promoting this brand or is it just their figure? Is it just a cartoon of them? To me, that's insane. And the fact that YouTube and other social media allow this practice because it's just not regulated enough, right? So there is a big issue at hand that needs to be solved in the near future. Of course, the, despite all the issues, I also see the benefits of that, right? If, if you're a large multinational company and you want to inform all your employees around the world in a video format, it's much more uh, trust building if you can speak their language. So you can uh, make a company video in English, put it into HN AI or another AI generator, uh, have it translated, uh, made the AI generate your mouth to the language and publish it to their employees. Just please make sure you check the translation first because we know how uh, the pitfalls of MT and, and AI translation, right? But often people don't know it, so they would just put it into Vietnamese and send it out there. And this can have very negative effects if you say something in, uh, inappropriate, of course. And if you do it, just be aware that people might think you speak the language, right? I'm sticking with Vietnamese. If you have a uh, a production center in Vietnam and you send the videos there with you speaking Vietnamese and then one day you meet these people they will expect that you can speak to them right and uh, it will be very awkward if you say oh this was actually never me talking to you this was a machine so uh, just keep all these things in mind but of course it can be a very powerful tool what I noticed is that uh, generative AI video creations definitely take out the soul aspect of a channel, right? Because there are a couple of people making now a, a lot of money with, with faceless YouTube videos, for example, uh, with, a, with an AI generated voice or an AI avatar. Um, you can tell there is just no creation process there. There is no human aspects in it. Uh, we, that's what we say about the language industry all the time. It goes, it goes without saying that this is exactly the same in, in song creation, right? You, you could have ChatGPT write a song for you and it would be quite good, but you can just tell that it's, it doesn't have the feeling in there. And the same goes with video creation. Um, I get people all the time that tell me, you, we like your channel because it's authentic, it's real, right? And I would definitely lose this realness if I just kept speaking in German and have have a machine translate my face. Um, I could probably get my point across better because I'm more fluent in German, but still a lot could get lost in translation there. So I will definitely never do that. So don't worry about that. Even if it comes, becomes flawless, I will not do that. I will always speak to you uh, from my perspective, with my mouth, with my brain and uh, not run it through an AI first. But uh, I thought it's an in interesting development uh, in this area and I think we should all be aware of because it is language related. So that's what this video is about, just to inform you that this exists. So be aware if you, uh, if you see things online, be even more aware that they can't be trusted anymore, right? So pay attention to people's mouth, see if something is weird. You can usually see the seam around the mouth moving a little bit. Uh, but of course, if you just look at it, scroll by, you, you will not notice that it's generated. Uh, just keep that in mind. And I hope this wasn't too scary, but an interesting video. And I see you next week with the next one. Bye bye.